what's up welcome back here to another edition of intuitive angling much appreciated you guys uh, making a little time to watch the video got a little bit different video today um you guys know that watch the channel you know i talk a lot about environmental issues here um i don't think that you can i don't think that you can be a bass angler or a hunter or an outdoorsman if you don't incorporate that in your in your viewpoint because it's so intimately connected to what we do and i just wanted to give you guys an example i want to show you guys an example of what is going on environmentally that's sort of like it's people don't pay much attention to it or it's accepted within uh, you know our society today but i'm going to show you guys an example just here in springfield missouri what's going on and then i'm going to make a little bit of a comment on it so here we go okay guys here's just one example of what i'm talking about see this area right here this get the, it's under construction it's been getting cleared off right here this is approximately i'm guessing about a 50 acre section of land here three or four months ago this was nothing but woods and mature, mature trees it was one of the most beautiful sections of uh, land in the city here you had you know hundred lots of hundred year old oak trees walnut trees a lot of diversity and cover cover almost every time i came by here you would see some type of wildlife you'd see deer you'd see turkey foxes coyotes you'd see hawks in the trees owls flying occasionally an eagle like that it's been bulldozed off right here for construction and the thing about this there's not even any plans this is just being bulldozed off by some greedy developer wanting to sell it to the highest bidder here and this is an example of what we're talking about here that i've lived in springfield for like four years i bet i've seen 50 areas in town here the same way they come in here they pull down the bulldozers they pull down bows down every tree in the area and start uh, setting it up for development okay gang let's talk a little bit about this here um like i said before this this what you what i just showed you there this this you know indiscriminate bulldozing down of natural habitat um it's going on everywhere it's not this is just in springfield missouri now this is what i sort of want to set a stage for i've been in springfield like i said about four years and there's probably been 50 areas around town just like i showed you there mature old growth uh, tracks of of uh, forest uh, prime wildlife habitat getting bows down bo bulldozed down for non-essential crap you know, gas stations vaping shops whatever like that that's what they usually put up in there and this is just springfield it is going on every freaking place in the united states it's going on in your hometown just like that and here's what happens with that a lot of people don't realize is look at the displaced wildlife that just occurred in that one track that i put you in there there's that was a 50 acre track of prime wildlife habitat those those every fish creature that had to move out of there probably millions of them were killed as far as the, you know the smaller species mice the, you know just insects whatever no telling how many millions were killed there um, and a lot of people what they don't understand is the environmental impact this has on the balance of life the cycle of life because Take, for example, if you had just the town that you guys were in. Say, for example, somebody came in there and did something to it to make it uninhabitable. So if you had a town of 20,000 people, it, become in, it became in, uninhabitable. And then those 20,000 people were displaced and had to move to somewhere else, which increases the burden, you know, on resources and other t type of places. This is exactly what's happening here, guys. So a lot of people don't understand is when you take this rate of development that's going on right now across the country, across, across the globe, just put another hundred years on it, okay? Take, for example, Springfield, Missouri. Just, you know, I just showed you guys an example of what's happened there. And, you know, there's been a bunch of, bunch of areas just like that just in the last few years. Let's put another hundred years on top of that where these developers and the the zoning and planning commissions give the green light to these guys to do whatever they want. What is our environment going to look like a hundred years from now, just on this, these type of areas? It's like a cancer. It's no different than a cancer. Now you're going to say, well, Randy, you can't stop progress. Bullshit. You can stop progress. And that is not progress. What you, what I just showed you there, bulldozing down 50 acres of prime wildlife habitat. It's been there for thousands of years to put in a, some type, like a smoke shop or gas station is not any progress. Here's how you can address that and still have these same issues. 
Springfield and every town out there has parts of the city that are dilapidated, run down, and abandoned. Springfield and the inner city part of it, there's there's just acres upon acres of the abandoned, dilapidated buildings. Those developers can go in there and clear that particular area off, open that up for development that hasn't that will have no environmental impact, and they're going to say, "Well, that's too expensive." So what? Look at the value right there. How? What do you think is more valuable? Okay, you guys out there, a lot of you guys fish, and most everybody fishes and hunt. What is more valuable to you as a person? If you drive past a 50 acre track of woods every day on your way to work and you see some bucks out there and you see turkeys hanging around and you see some bald eagles up in the trees, is that not more valuable to you than driving by there and seeing another gas station or something like that? That is the point here. And this is what a lot of people don't understand is the, de the developers and the city council members that, that pass these zoning and planning commissions, most of them are environmentally ignorant. They're either apathetic, they don't give a crap, or they're ignorant on what they're doing, or they're just greedy. It's a combination of everything. And until we can bring this to public awareness and not have these zoning and planning people out there give the green light to any developer, any developer out there just that wants to make a buck, we are in the process of destroying the planet that we live in. Not the planet. The planet's going to be fine without us. It's going to spit us up and chew us out and, re and you know, start all over again like it has before. But the problem is, is we're endangering ourselves. We're endangering the human race. We're endangering every species that is on this planet. And what a lot of people don't understand is there's an interconnectedness. There's a balance of life. We live in a universe that is that's like it's it's like organized perfect chaos. And when you disrupt one part of the cycle of life, that's the chain. It not it, it doesn't just do that. It goes on up the cycle. It's like when people say, "Well, you know, you need." I can't believe you want to, you know, keep this housing development going going up here because it's gonna you know, there's an endangered mouse or something on it. You're not protecting that mouse for the mouse. You're protecting it for the, its impact on the environment for the other higher parts of the food chain that directly, you know, extend up to us eventually like that. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to put that out there. Like I said, the only thing that's going to change, like anything else in this country, the only thing that changes it is political legislation. The private sector, for the most part, does not have the discipline to do stuff like this on their own. You've got to have laws and legislation to protect things like this, to protect these areas that need protected for our own well-being. We need wild spaces, guys. We need it for not only just for the what I just told you about, but we need it to maintain our sanity and to maintain it's therapeutic. That's what I've talked a lot about, why, why people gravitate to parks. Park, a park is a sterile natural environment that people gravitate to that because they need that we need these wild places intact for not only ourselves but other creatures we share this planet with we the the, the human species for is extremely arrogant for the most part because they think that everything else is underneath and below them we are no better than any of those creatures that shared that 50 you know acre track of wood out there we're just sharing this planet like they are so anyway, just a little bit of a rant here, guys. I'm just really pissed off to see that all the time. You know, like I said, that track of land that I showed you guys, there was nothing even planned for it. Some some freaking dude with millions of dollars just bought it up, bulldozed it down, is going to put it on the open market for whatever like that. Just it's bullshit is what it is. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you all later. See you.